Such an insane project. When I started with this little computer thingy like a few months ago, I would have never ever thought that stuff like this is possible. That's the thing. It's a three axis camera slider. Let me demonstrate. Building a slider isn't that complicated, isn't that complex, isn't that hard. But the software, no, it's completely crazy. The steppers, they start at the same time, but they do not end at the same time. So this is not real-time synchronized. This is the big filter when it gets to DIY camera sliders. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose. One day, one step in the right direction I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you If I can do it, you can do it too Welcome back to the vlog, it is Thursday, another day, another chance to push hard And the topic for this one is another camera slider update because I am done Completely done, so let's get it But before we get started, lock us out to all my subscribers Thank you for making my life special and worth a living to the max So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video In my last vlog, you can check it out right here I tried the slider with my own program, with these, and I use the small patch cables and these, oh my freaking god, they literally started to burn, I'm not even kidding. Check this out, it's molten plastic right here, they could not handle the amps, <laughs> it's crazy, and this is not necessary whatsoever. Talking about an Arduino Mega with three drivers, like three huge drivers. All that you really need is a CNC shield. So actuating the slider with the two joysticks was possible. Again, check out the last vlog if you're interested in that. And today I finally got myself another piece. And well, now it is done. The freaking slider is done. And as I said, these tiny Pololo drivers, it's enough with the CNC shield. It is so simple. I spent so much time on wiring it up, coming up with my own common ground and stuff like that. I wasted hours, this is actually all that you need. You can plug them steppers right in. So simple, it is actually crazy simple. And also now this power supply is doing the job, doing the trick. In my last vlog I said, that, well, this is not enough for these drivers, but it's clearly enough for these drivers. And by the way, I think it's this is a bad combination because the motor, well, the cable started to burn <laughs> and the motors probably would burn next because they got really, really hot. But yeah, check out the freaking progress. The slider right here, the pan, outer view, and the inner view for the tilt. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> Can you believe this? Is this such an insane project. Once again, and what I'm doing right now, well, these are obviously keyframes. But hey, it's working, it's actually working, which is awesome. So the slider, the mechanical part is done, except for the camera mount. I'm still waiting for a, well, I'm waiting for a quick release system and I still need to design a part for that, but I need to wait. But this is literally easy compared to all this effort, all this previous effort. And what I just did was again controlling the slider, well the steppers with keyframes. I used drag and frame test version of this program. So this is not usable for real-time applications aka for videos because as you saw if you paid close attention the steppers they start at the same time but they do not end at the same time. So this is not real-time synchronized. And this is the big filter when it gets to DIY camera sliders. You can go for one axis like that's no freaking problem. There are libraries, Excel stepper with accelerations and stuff, stuff like that. But when it gets to acceleration plus synchronization this is completely insane. So the more I learned about it, the more it got clear to me that this is completely nuts. This would probably waste months and it's highly likely, highly likely that I won't be able to do it in the end. Long story short, I won't go for my own program and I also can't use this Dragon Frame program. Dragon Frame has this DMC controller which costs like three grand, something like that, completely crazy. And with this controller, you could actually deliver synchronized real-time information to the steppers, but I don't have this kind of money. If I did, I wouldn't have done that. But 
There is one last option, one last hope, one last program software that I put my hope into, which is GRPL. It's a CNC software. Because if you think about it, I talked about that a few times already. A CNC is a three axis router and a camera slider is a three axis whatever. It's the same thing basically. GRBL is real time synchronized. A ton of guys invested a ton of time into this program. Me as a one man show, I would never be able to do this, so I will actually try to use GRBL for a slider. Which means two things basically. First of all, please pray for me. Second of all, I need to learn G code and I need to write my own little programs for different applications. For example, cycle this object, it's like 30 centimeters away, and yeah, well, circle. Circle another object that's like one meter away, two meters away. Just a slide, just whatever. I need a separate program for every application that I need and also I will need a computer with me, with the slider. That's another thing that sucks, but whatever. It's the only way that I might get this to work. So to recap, Building a slider isn't that complicated, isn't that complex, isn't that hard. It might be difficult, it might be hard if you start from zero, from scratch. You know, I already have a vast experience. <laughs> vast, right? But you know, this thing took me a few days at most, so this is the easy part. The mechanical <laughs> part is the easy part. But the software, no, it's completely crazy. That is our, that is, that is, it's, Simply outrageous, it's a big filter. Definitely, definitely. But all in all, even though this is the easy part, I'm really proud of it. I mean, it's working. It's freaking working, check this out. This is, it's amazing. This program is so awesome, literally you can set limits, home points so easily. And it's definitely necessary. Because... Yeah, because as you can see, I do have... I still have a few problems that I need to solve. It's not that necessary, but it would be cool. Because as you can see, I haven't found a good solution to close this timing belt. I tried cutting it at a very sharp, sharp, sharp angle and then covered it with a duct tape and you know this sharp angle gives it more space so that the duct tape doesn't rip like at this length but at this longer length, way longer length. That was a terrible explanation, I'm sorry for that. But as you can see, this didn't work out so I had to come up with a little clip for this axis, right? Well, for this belt. This belt is no problem because it is pretty freaking long which means that this tilt is actually able to turn quite a bit without this clip causing any problems. But this is not the, the freaking case when it gets to this other, to this other axis because yeah, this one is long, this one is rather short. So there is only like half it, well, almost quarter of a turn that it can move. Like this one can move half a turn, but this one can only move like a quarter turn, something like that. It might be enough for some applications, but it's definitely not optimal. On the other hand, I haven't looked into timing belts. There should, there might be closed variations. But the cool thing with the clips is I'm able to get this fairly tight, fairly tight. Another upgrade option would be limit switches in here and a little clip on here, but I would also be totally fine with soft limits. When I think about it, if I go for the GRBL and use soft limits, I probably will like turn it off and then position it somewhere, set this as my home point, which is also the lower limit. And then, you know, the limits won't change. So that shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, let's turn off the power. That's the thing. It's a three axis camera slider, full motion control. If I'm able to get this GRBL code going. It would be certainly awesome. It's also fairly balanced, so even though these are tiny, tiny feet, it's not falling over. And when the camera is on here, everything should be balanced, so this will be awesome. The camera probably needs to be fairly up here, because this is actually really heavy. Like, the whole contraption is pretty freaking heavy. Hmm. Three, maybe four kilograms. I don't know what's that, like eight or nine pounds. I have no idea, but it's really, it's really heavy and rigid. And it's actually kind of beautiful. I really like it. Oh my God. Yeah, one last look. That's the thing right here. And there is yet another thing that is 
Safe to say, Arduino definitely changed my life. When I started with this little computer thingy, like a few months ago, maybe two, three months ago, I would have never ever thought that stuff like this is possible. This freaking door lock, this camera slider, a CNC machine DIY, it is completely insane. Arduino opens up doors for insane automation projects. It is so freaking amazing. And there will be more, oh my God. It is just so freaking cool when I think about it. it actually changed my life. But hey, that's enough progress for today. I will continue this project once I get my quick release plate. So smash that like button the way this ladder will one day smash awesome videos right in your eyes. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Bang the bell like crap. Never miss camera ladder updates. Check the recent news on chrisfire.com and yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>